They say if anything is certain, change is certain. And when it comes to LinkedIn, that is the case for sure. And in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the latest updates across pages, profiles, content, and one in particular is a game changer and has the potential to skyrocket your reach. If you want to know what that is, stick around and find out. G'day listeners, it is Coach Michelle J. Raymond, and if I'm sounding a little refreshed, it is that I am just back from a mini break away up north celebrating the sunshine and also to celebrate another achievement that happened for me this week. I just crossed over the 20,000 connections and followers mark. 20,000 of you are following along on my content over on LinkedIn, and that is the power of consistency on LinkedIn and persistency over time. This has not happened for me overnight. To know that so many people are following along and enjoying my content is an absolute privilege. If you are one of those people, I thank you. If you are not connected with me over on LinkedIn, guess what? You've got some homework already out of today's episode. Go to the show notes. You can find the link to connect with me over on LinkedIn and just let me know you're a listener. So really, while numbers aren't everything, it is a fabulous milestone to achieve and an awesome start to my week. And as we go into today's episode, there is one particular change that's happened on LinkedIn recently that I have had multiple people telling me, Michelle, you've got to check this out. You've got to let the listeners know because we are getting hundreds of thousands of impressions for our posts. And I was a bit mind blown about this one. Who doesn't want more reach and engagement? So yeah, we're going to dive into that one at the end of the show. You have to stick around. You know, us podcast hosts always tease you and I'm no different, but we are going to go into the latest changes across pages and profile and content that I think you need to be aware of. There are lots and lots of changes that happen on LinkedIn on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis. I want to keep it short and sweet. So I'm not telling you absolutely everything. If they change that the corners are now rounded on image posts or something like that, to me, I don't think that's a game changer. Sure, it looks a little bit nicer. Maybe your experience on LinkedIn is a little bit easier, but I don't think they're the ones that are really going to change the way that you leverage LinkedIn to grow your business. And that's what I want to stick with today. So we're going to break it down. We're going to go over pages first, then I'll go over the profile and of course, saving the best to last. Before we go into all of these changes, I just want to have a quick shout out to our podcast sponsors, Metricool. And here's some of the latest updates from them. If you haven't heard of it already, Metricool is an all-in-one social media management tool that is a lifesaver for scheduling, analyzing, and managing social media content. Whether it's for my podcast or LinkedIn pages, I can tackle everything in one place. Plus, Metricool is free today, tomorrow, and for life, allowing anyone to test out the platform and get hands-on with their social media management. Their free plan allows you to connect one brand across many social networks. With Metricool's free plan, you get access to in-depth analytics to make more strategic decisions, planning and auto scheduling of up to 50 pieces of content per month to save time, promote your posts in seconds by creating and managing ads directly through the platform, view best times to see when your followers are more active and know when to post, review and reply to all important social media messages with Metricool's inbox feature, analysis of five competitor profiles to spy on the brands you like, and much more. It's truly a tool that you'll want to add to your social media toolkit, Plus, if you think the free plan is jam-packed with features, they also have premium plans to customize to your specific social media needs. To everybody that's listening, make sure you create your free account today and get started exploring the platform. All the links are in the show notes. Okay, let's start with the updates for LinkedIn company pages that I think you need to pay attention to. One of the changes that has recently happened and is on rollout for pages is that you can now request to get your company page verified. So that's just a little thing that shows people that it's a real business and a real page. And I guess that's to stomp out a lot of the fake stuff that we're seeing on the platform. Do I think it's worth your time? Absolutely. If you go into page admin view on 
on the left hand side, there's a settings. And if you go in there, there's an opportunity to request verification. Now, this isn't a how to episode, but just to let you know that it's there, I'll be doing more content around actually how to do that. So make sure that you are following me across on LinkedIn. And if you don't want to miss it, don't forget, you can go to my profile top right hand corner. There is a bell just underneath the banner. If you click on that, and change the option, it will notify you of all my posts. And this way, you're never going to miss any of these great tips that happen in between podcast episodes. What else do we have over on company pages? I'm starting to see that LinkedIn premium for company pages is being refined. I did an episode on that a few episodes ago around what was actually involved. And I was fairly harsh with some of my judgments and feedback, things like, why would I want to display a testimonial that's only 70 characters long? Now that's changed. It's now up to 250 characters. We're seeing some of the other features within premium change as well. And I think we'll continue to see them work out where exactly is the right balance between what you pay for and the features that you get. And I, I think with anything new, I think people deserve the right to be able to grow, change and evolve. And LinkedIn is no different to this. And I'm excited because I think if they get this right, it's something that I'll definitely be recommending to the businesses that I work with that can have the budget. With some of the other changes to premium, we're seeing that you get notified of one person per day who visited your page. And I just think what page admin would be excited about knowing one person? I think that's a bit strange and I've got a feeling it must be to do with the European GDPR and privacy laws that are going on over there. And when you're trying to build a platform that is perfect for 200 plus countries, all the local regulations. That's got to be tricky on LinkedIn's behalf. So maybe one is better than nothing. But again, do I want to pay for that? That's the question mark that I have. I'm still on a watch and see when it comes to this feature. I've started my 30 day free trial. To be honest, I haven't noticed anything. I'm not expecting to notice anything. It doesn't do any harm, but ultimately I think you should always test it out for yourself and see how it works for you and your business in the position that you're in, the goals that you have, the resources that you have. As with always, test, 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 and let me know how it's been going for you. And thank you to those who did reach out and uh, give me feedback based on last week's request in the episode. What else do we have as far as company pages go? Invites to follow company pages. Once upon a time, they were front and center, top right hand corner in the page admin view. And this is where you get your 250 invite credits per month. All of a sudden it disappeared with the new admin dashboard and layout. And I was like, where is it gone? It went and hid in analytics for a little while, but now it's in the left hand menu. So go into page admin view. Down the bottom, there's invites to follow. I hope that I can share this message with as many people as possible so you know where to find it. Because if you're trying to grow a company page, especially in the beginning, using up those invite credits every month is really important. So as far as company pages goes, that's pretty much it. The rest is just layout changes, which take a little bit of getting used to, but all in all, have a poke around. There's nothing you can break. Go and have a look and see what else you can find. If you discover something new, please do reach out and let me know so I can share it with the rest of the listeners. Let's talk about what changes have come through for LinkedIn profiles and even the content that is surrounding those. The main changes that we've seen have been around the ability to edit scheduled posts. Now that is a game changer for anyone that wants to use the scheduled post feature on LinkedIn. I'm glad to see that this little bug has been resolved because it was annoying that you would schedule a post and then you couldn't edit it. You would have to actually copy, delete, go back and start again. Nobody's got time in their life when a simple edit button was the solution. So exciting times, we've seen that, and I'm pretty sure that rolled out across company pages as well, but most people notice it on their personal profiles. I'm a big fan of content scheduling, so if you haven't tried it before, definitely worth a go we weren't able to schedule polls either. So from that perspective, we can now do that. Is this earth shattering? No, it's not. But for those of you who want to be all in on scheduling and get everything organized so that you can just get on with your week, this is going to be helpful. And listeners, I'm going to give you a bonus tip this week when it comes to polls. Now I've tried a few recently, mostly on Sundays. 
And I'm achieving almost double the normal impressions on my posts. I'm keeping them very simple, very generic, giving people a yes, no answer choice so that they have to pick a side. It makes them easy for them to vote. And yeah, the reach on those has been spectacular. If you haven't tried a poll for a little while, I definitely think it's worth throwing into the mix, company pages, all personal content, and just seeing the results that you get. So yeah, that one was a little bit surprising for me. I'm always testing new things, going back and trying things that I used to do. I always encourage people to test, 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 because we never know what shifted on LinkedIn side. You don't know what shifted in your community, more importantly, and only you can test it with your community. And that is super critical if you want to leverage LinkedIn to grow your business, that you find the things that resonate within your company and for your community that you are targeting, not just your ideal customers, but the whole industry. So that's kind of cool. Now, when we're looking at other changes that have come through for LinkedIn profiles, in general, I think there's just something that you need to be aware of is that LinkedIn view themselves as an AI first company. Now, if you think about that, that means a lot of the features and functions that are going to come through. And if you think about it, they're owned by Microsoft. So they've got investments into ChatGPT and Copilot and things like this. So I think we'll see more and more of this. We're at the very baby stages of this whole adventure when it comes to AI and LinkedIn. And I've been on the record number of times to say that what I've seen certainly doesn't impress me yet. But if you think about it, they are going to want to generate a return on those investments. They have a captive professional audience. We know that those that embrace AI and incorporate it into their careers or into their business are going to see results from that. For me personally, it has been a game changer in our business in the different ways that we use these types of tools to really become more productive, to have better quality and free up time so that I can focus on what's important. And that's my customers and generating that new business on a human to human level. And, you know, that I can't do if I'm bogged down doing things that just take up time for no real good reason when these tools can help me out. But as far as the ones that we see on LinkedIn, am I into them? Yeah, not yet, but I'll always change my mind. I promise if listeners, I think that you need to know about this, I'll be the first one to come back put my hand in the air and say, I was wrong or this has changed and I promise that you'll know about it. I know that I teased you at the top of this episode that there was one feature change you need to be aware of that is generating potentially hundreds of thousands of impressions for people and I'm going to share about it after this short break. Welcome back and as promised, I am going to be sharing with you the feature that has changed that is generating potentially hundreds of thousands of impressions for people that are lucky enough to have their content picked up with this new feature. Now, it only happens on mobile and it's called video for you. If you use other social media platforms like TikTok, there's the discover page or for you page. This is the kind of thing that we're talking about over here on LinkedIn. The whole aim of this game, think short form vertical videos. Right. So that's the first thing only on mobile. OK, and if you grab your mobile device and you've got this feature, if you scroll down normally about two or three scrolls, you'll come to a section where it says videos for you and you'll see probably three or four videos lined up horizontally that if you have a look, they're trying to get your attention and introduce you to new creators. This is where LinkedIn is trying to help you get discovered. Now, if you click on one of those, it opens up what very much looks like a TikTok or a Reels or Shorts feed, and you can start scrolling vertically. And for people that are having their content picked up in this, they are generating hundreds of thousands of impressions, which is just crazy numbers. This whole concept is something LinkedIn has been trying to work out for quite a while now. I think they mentioned having a discovery page almost 12, 18 months ago, I first reported on it and they've tried different things. It was going to be much bigger than just video. Then it became shorter. It was a button down the bottom. Then that disappeared for some people that have creative managers. They were getting videos uploaded specifically 
specifically by them, like they had to be nominated. The rest of us mere mortals didn't have access. But now we're starting to see just general people that upload a short form video are getting picked up into this feed. And because it's brand new, think about it. The people at LinkedIn want this to be a success. The product development team that developed this have obviously put a lot of time, energy and resources into it. How do you generate a return? You get people excited about it. I know for a lot of people, they're questioning short form video feed on LinkedIn. It's not really the platform that they go to consume that kind of content. And I get it from that perspective. But at the same time, if you think about it, the home feed is so full with over a billion people creating content all the time. And from that perspective, it's so hard to stand out. So having another opportunity to be discovered in a separate feed, I'm definitely high-fiving LinkedIn for this. We need a different way to get discovered by new people so that we can grow our followers, so that we can share all of that effort that goes into creating posts and short form videos. We don't see a lot of good quality content in short form videos on LinkedIn. So I'm excited that it gives a place for those people who might be TikTokers, who might be making reels or shorts to come across and participate on LinkedIn. Because if you think about it, LinkedIn is really skewed towards those that are good at writing and not so great at the moment for those that create videos. So this is really going to be another opportunity for people to showcase different talents. And I don't think it needs to be a high end production. Don't think that this is something that your business really has to go over the top and hire a studio or do anything like that. As long as you've got a mobile phone these days and tools like CapCut, tools like Descript, these make life so much easier for you to create content and especially video content. The thing that I haven't seen when I've tested this out myself is that when I go in, so if I select one of the four videos that I can see in the videos for you, it opens up the new feed. And if I start scrolling to try and find something, I haven't seen any content in there that's from a company page. And I really hope that changes. I'll be very disappointed in the strongest terms that I can use on a podcast if they don't include company page content in that feed as well, because yeah, I, I think that would just be next level discrimination to pages. So I want you to think about listeners, what is a short form video that you could create to start having a go at this? It doesn't have to be perfect. If it is your first short form video, talk about that in the video. You would be surprised at how many people will want to cheer you on, myself included. Tag me in the post at Michelle J. Raymond. I will come and celebrate and support you because getting over that first one is the way that you can get further down the track to be an expert at creating these short form style videos. And if you don't get started and other people are getting all of these impressions, then that is potentially opportunities that are going to them instead of you because they're willing to have a go. And that's all that this comes down to. So I'm going to challenge myself on this one too, to have a go at more of this short form vertical format content and see what I can put out there. Who knows? Maybe my video will get picked up no different to these other people that are reporting such amazing kind of numbers right now. And this will probably change over time, but with anything, jump on the opportunity, see what you can discover for yourself. If you discover something that's pretty cool, please reach out. Let me know over in the direct messages on LinkedIn. You can drop a comment now. If you're listening on Spotify, hello to you. Did you know that you can leave comments on Spotify podcasts these days? Wow. So listeners, as we wrap up today, that is the LinkedIn updates that I think that you need to be aware of to leverage LinkedIn to the max to generate business opportunities. Until next episode, I hope you all have an awesome week. Cheers.